morning and we're going back to the book of Leviticus. We've been here now for about three weeks preaching out of the book of Leviticus and I believe the Lord would have us to make a return trip this morning. We've got several more trips to make to this precious little book in the beginning of the Old Testament. You say, the book of Leviticus? Precious? Oh, yes. You can't help but reading the New Testament and especially the Pauline epistles and come away after you've read Leviticus and then read all of Paul's writings and realize Paul uses a lot of what he has read and, and, and put in his heart in Leviticus to put into writing for New Testament Bible, church age doctrine, types and shadows and spiritual lessons for you and I. The Lord has refreshed my spirit and my soul with this book here in the last couple of two or three weeks, I guess, and spoke to my heart in ways that he never has out of this book, and I appreciate that. Leviticus chapter number 22, I'd like to read several verses of scripture to you, and in your hearing, and I want you to keep your Bibles open with me, because we're going to preach uh, down through here and hit some other passages as we go through the message. Leviticus chapter number 22, if you found your place, say Amen. amen. It's not only a joy to have Brother Onassis, an old friend of mine from down in Georgia. It's good to have some more Georgians here this morning. The Edwards family back there, y'all wave your hands at us. Praise God. Love Brother Timmy, Brother Michael, and their family. I have known them for a long, long time. They live in Georgia, but they worship in South Carolina. That's all right. God meets anywhere. But if you're going to live somewhere, it'd probably be good, amen, not to live in South Carolina, go live in Georgia, amen. <laughs> Y'all all know Brother Rick Parker, dear friend of ours here. That's their pastor down there at the Landmark Baptist Church, and they've put up with him for now on close to 20 years, and he's put up with them for now on close to 20 years, so they just put up with each other, amen. They're good people. I appreciate them being here. They was here for the meeting and hung around. We've still got folk here from Indiana. Appreciate the Wilt family and these folk being here from Indiana. And uh, wherever you from, parts unknown or from around here, we're just glad you come this morning. Leviticus chapter number 22, we'll begin reading in verse number 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and to his sons that they separate themselves from. I want you to notice this phrase. Underline it. Don't forget it. I want you to notice how many times we're going to see it throughout the course of our reading this morning. The holy things of the children of Israel, and that they profane not my holy name in those things which they hallow unto me. I am the Lord. Say unto them, Whosoever he be of all your seed, speaking of the Levitical priesthood, Aaron's children, Whosoever he be of all your seed among your generations that goeth unto the holy things, which the children of Israel shall hallow unto the Lord, having his uncleanness upon him, that soul shall be cut off from my presence, I am the Lord. What man soever of the seed of Aaron is a leper, hath a running issue, he shall not eat of the holy things until he be clean. And whoso toucheth anything that is unclean by the dead, or a man whose seed goeth from him, or whosoever toucheth any creeping thing, whereby he may be made clean, or a man of whom he may take uncleanness, whatsoever uncleanness he hath, the soul which hath touched any such shall be unclean until even, and shall not eat of the holy things, unless he wash his flesh with water. And when the sun is down, he shall be clean, and shall afterward eat of the holy things, because it is his food." That which dieth of itself or is torn with beast, he shall not eat to defile himself therewith. I am the Lord. They shall therefore keep mine ordinance, lest they bear sin for it and die therefore. If they profane it, I, the Lord, do sanctify them. Verses 10 and 11 is what caught my attention and will be our text, even though we'll read past it this morning. Verse number 10, there shall no stranger eat of the holy thing. A sojourner of the priest or an hired servant shall not eat of the holy thing. But if the priest buy any soul with his money, he shall eat of it. And he that is born in his house, they shall eat of his meat. If the priest's daughter also be married unto a stranger, she may not eat of an offering of the holy things. But if the priest's daughter be a widow or divorced and have no child and is returned unto her father's house as in her youth, she shall eat of her father's meat, but there shall be 
no stranger eat thereof. And if a man eat of the holy thing unwittingly, then he shall put the fifth part thereof unto it and shall give it unto the priest with the holy thing. And they shall not profane the holy things of the children of Israel which they offer unto the Lord or suffer them to bear the iniquity of trespass when they eat their holy things. For I, the Lord, do sanctify them. Eleven times in the 16 verses that we have read, the phrase pops up over and over and over again about the holy thing or the holy things this morning. It is connected exclusively with the tabernacle, but more importantly with the children of Aaron the priesthood. You say, preacher, what are these holy things that the Bible is speaking of? What is this holy thing that the Lord is talking about that they can partake of? Or if they're unclean, they can't partake of. Or strangers couldn't have any of. Or things of this nature. What are these holy things? Well, if you begin to read backwards in your Bible in Exodus and Leviticus, what you'll find is any time that a man brought an offering to the Lord, a sin offering, a trespass, Pass offering, a wave offering, a heave offering, a thank offering, whatever it may be. When they brought that animal sacrifice, part of the sacrifice would be burnt in the fire. The fat and the inwards would be burnt in the fire before the Lord as a sweet smelling savor. We talked about that at one time before. But we find that the meat of the offering, such as the shoulder or other things that that is good for food or if a man simply even brought we'll find in a minute first ripe grapes and first fruits from his uh, his garden or his vineyard this would not belong to the altar this belongs to the priest and anybody in the priest family they get to take part in it the Bible calls this hallowed things and holy things because brother John Glenn when a man brought this sacrifice before the Lord immediately it became hallowed sanctified, holy. You say why? Because he's given it to God. It's no longer his anymore. It doesn't belong to him anymore. It belongs to the king of kings and it belongs to the Lord of lords. And the Lord would say everybody in the priest family has the opportunity to take part in any of those holy things. Those things set apart, sanctified for the use of the tabernacle. That's going to be the hire of the priest. But only the family gets to have part in it this morning. Uh, here we find it was given to them as a gift, the Bible said. But only those that are in the family, only those that are in the house can be partakers of what belongs to the priest this morning. And the Bible calls it over and over and over and over again, holy things, holy things. Let me just pause and say right here that we've read reached today. This ain't my message, but I do feel like I need to say this. We've reached today, Brother Charlie, in our churches where there ain't nothing holy no more. There ain't nothing sacred no more. There, there ain't nothing off limits no more. We have turned our worship centers and our churches, we've turned them into coffee bars with baristas as the pastors. We, we have blackened the, the sanctuaries out so it looks like a club and it looks like a nightclub and the preacher gets up and he looks like he just came from a rock and roll concert, looks like he just came from an R&B hip hop concert and there's nothing holy anymore. We've even come to the day to where they have taken the word of God in the majestic English of the king's language, Brother Trey, and they've pulled it down into translations like the Message Bible, and they've made God's word into some street gutter language that meets the common man where he is. Can I say that's garbage this morning? There should still be a difference between the holy and the unholy. There should still be some sacred things. There should still be some honorable things. There should still be some set aside things that we're not going to change. That we're not going to mess with. Because they are holy this morning. Holy this morning. 
Now I want to preach for a few minutes on this thought I'm preaching on having a part in holy things. The Bible talks about Brother Kent who could have a part in the holy things. And I want to preach for a few minutes on having a part in the holy things. Now, what does all this do for us? I know you're sitting there thinking, "What? we read this, but what does this do for me this morning? I want you to understand something. I got some verses I want to read on my phone. Hand that to me, Brother Jack. That, that I copy and pasted. It was easier to do that than write them all out by hand this morning. I want y'all to understand something. When I got born again, I partook in holy things this morning. Do you realize? when you got saved you became a partaker in holy things this morning the Bible said this the Bible said in Romans 15 that the Gentiles have been made partakers of spiritual things imagine that us bunch of old Gentiles we're getting in on spiritual things this morning the Bible said for we being many we are all partakers of that one bread the Bible said this you cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of devils the Bible Bible said that the Gentiles are now partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. The Bible said in Philippians 1 7 that we have been made partakers of the grace of God. The Bible said in Colossians 1 12 that we have been made partakers of the inheritance of the saints in life. The Bible said in 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 2 that us believers we are partakers of the benefit. Imagine that. The benefits of God. The Bible said brother Cope that the Lord is good and forget not all his benefits this morning. Yes sir. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 1 said we are partakers of the heavenly calling. Hebrews 3 14 said we're made partakers of Christ. Look at all these holy things we get to be partakers in. The Bible said in Hebrews 6 4 that we're partakers of the Holy Ghost. Hebrews 12 10 said we're partakers of his holiness. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 4 said we are given exceeding great and precious promises that we might be partakers of the divine nature this morning you say preacher I'm glad for that but how do I get to take part in the holy things how do I have part in these holy things listen to me if you're going to get involved in holy things you've got to meet the holy thing Now, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to look at the only time or the first time in your New Testament where the phrase holy thing is mentioned. Go with me. Hold your place. Go with me to Luke chapter 1. Go with me to Luke's gospel and chapter 1. Hold your place in Leviticus. We're coming right back. But watch what your Bible said in Luke chapter 1. You say, what do you mean? If we're going to be partaker of holy things, we first got to know the holy thing. Watch the first time this phrase is mentioned in your New Testament. Y'all listen to me. The first time the phrase is mentioned in the New Testament, Brother Travis, it ain't got nothing to do uh, with a drink offering. It ain't got nothing to do with a meat offering. It ain't got nothing to do. It's got to do with a person this morning. Watch what your Bible said in Luke 1. The, Mary, uh, uh, the angel shows up to Mary and tells her you're going to have a child. His name's going to be called Jesus. He's going to get the throne of his father David. And watch verse number 35. Luke chapter 1 and verse number 35. I want everybody to see this this morning. Luke 1 35. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall shall overshadow thee. Therefore also, that holy thing <laughs> which shall be born of thee shall be called, what's this holy thing called? It's called the Son of God. And can I tell y'all this morning, listen to me, all of God's holy things come through the median of God's holy thing this morning. You say, preacher, how do I get to take part in holy things? You know what God's holy things are? The Holy Ghost, the Scriptures, the church, worship, joy, peace, long-suffering, righteousness, the songs we sing. How do we get opportunity to take part in them holy things? You got to have a place in your life where you came in contact with the holy thing that sanctified you, saved you, placed you in the family of God and made you meet to be a partaker of the holy things of God this morning. This world don't have holy things. 
This world's got carnal things. I'm telling you, listen to me, young people and every adult in the building. This world will offer you all kind of things, but it's all carnal things. And they're all going to burn up. And they're all going to be gone. The world ain't got holy things. They ain't got sanctified things. They ain't got things like God's got. You say, what's God got? Oh, he's got all kind of holy things. The Bible said this in the New Testament. In the New Testament, we have a Holy Ghost. We have a Holy Savior. We have Holy prophets. We have holy angels. We know a holy one. We have holy scriptures. We've been given a holy kiss. We have a holy God and a holy father. We have a holy spirit. We have holy things. We have a holy temple. We're founded on holy apostles. We're part of a holy church. We're part of holy brethren. We're going to a holy place. We're a holy priesthood. We're a holy nation. We have holy men of God. We have holy women. We have a holy conversation. We have a holy faith. We're going to a holy city where there's a holy Jerusalem. I'm telling you, I have been made a partaker in holy things, not carnal things of this world. I'm a part of holy things this morning. It ought to excite you that you're a part of holy things. All you ever used to be a part of for you saved was carnal things, wicked, ungodly things. But when you met Jesus Christ, you became part of a family where you get to have a part. Why? Because you're in the right family. I want to say several things about having a part in the holy things real quick. Three things about having a part in holy things, and we'll be done. Number one, I'd like to show you the buying in holy things the buying the purchasing in holy things go back to Leviticus 22 and look at verse number 10 and 11 how does a person gain access to holy things of God is it through just being a good person is it through baptism church membership no 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 there's two ways here in the text that a person could be brought into a relationship with the priest so that they could partake of the holy things. The first way in this buying of the holy things, the first way is you'd have to be bought in. Verse number 10, Leviticus 22, there shall no stranger, that's us, talking about Gentiles, there shall no stranger eat of the holy thing. We're all out, y'all. No hope for us getting involved in no holy stuff. There shall no stranger eat of the holy thing. A sojourner of the priest or an hired servant shall not eat of the holy things. But <laughs> but there is a caveat to this. How could the stranger, how could the alien... Brother Udi, how could he get opportunity to partake in holy things? He's got to be bought in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's got to be done by the priest. Yeah. That Bible said, my Savior is my high priest this morning. But if the priest buy any soul, and I like these three words, he didn't buy them with his neighbor's money. I am about to run through the back wall. He didn't buy him with his brother's money. It said that he would buy him with his money. In other words, it costed the priest something. It costed him something valuable to buy a stranger. It costed him something precious to buy somebody that didn't deserve to have part in holy things. You say, what did he buy him with? He bought him with his money. But y'all, I got to think to myself, I got to think, can I, can I read y'all some scripture? I wanna read y'all some scripture this morning. I got to think that the Apostle Paul, y'all stay right there because I'm going to stand in y'all's spot. I got to think the Apostle Paul was thinking about what I'm preaching this morning, Brother Keith, when he wrote Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12 to 19. You say, what's that say? It says this, Ephesians 2, 12, that at that time, 
ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers had no part, had no part in holy things. Hang right there. Don't push me over. <laughs> Aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope without God in the world. But that's what he said in Leviticus. You can't get in. But, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh. How did we get nigh? We got nigh because he bought us with his own blood. Said we're made nigh by his blood this morning. Bought us, paid for us, purchased us. And now we get to enjoy this. Y'all listen to me. None of us ever used to enjoy this. None of us used to like this. We didn't know it. You sitting on a bar stool, drinking yourself crazy. You didn't enjoy this. What happened that now we enjoy holy things? We got bought. We got purchased. We got paid for. And now we enjoy the Father's house. We enjoy the holy things of the Holy Scriptures and the Holy Spirit this morning. Oh yeah. You got to get you got to get bought. You got to get bought. What no, you're not your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which you have of God, and you're not your own, for ye are bought with the price. Ain't my own, brother Skip. You say I don't understand why y'all enjoy church so much. I don't understand why y'all enjoy that singing and everything. I don't understand why y'all enjoy that preaching and Bible and everything. Well, of course you don't. You ain't, you ain't in the family. You ain't never took part. So no, no wonder you don't enjoy it. I don't expect somebody that's never tasted it to know how good it tastes this morning. Bolt. I thought to myself this, y'all hang with me. The Bible said he's a stranger. You know what else about that, Brother David Fields? He's probably a thief. Read to you a little more Bible. Exodus chapter number 22 says this. Exodus 22, 1 said, if a man steal, he's a thief. If a man steal an ox or a sheep and kill it or sell it, he shall restore five oxen for an ox, four sheep for a sheep. If a thief be found breaking up and be smitten that he die. There shall no blood be shed for him. Exodus 22, 3. If the sun be risen upon him, there shall be blood shed for him, but he should make full restitution. Listen, the thief. If he have nothing, then he shall be sold for his theft. How come this dude, Brother John's getting bought in the first place? Maybe he's just a good for nothing, low down Sorry, dirty, rotten, Gentile thief. Oh, I got one better for you than that. You know what your Bible said in Leviticus chapter, or ex, uh, uh, Leviticus chapter 25, verse 44? It said in Leviticus 25, 44, that the only people the Israelites are supposed to take as bondmen and bondwomen, this is the very terminology it uses, Brother Jason, only take the heathen. Brother Jeff, this fella in the story that gets bought, he's a heathen, he's a thief, he's a stranger. And yet one day, he pulls himself up under the priest table and they flop holy things down in front of him. And he says, can I really? You sure it? I get, yeah, go ahead, eat all you want. But I'm a thief. But I'm a heathen. Yeah, but I bought you. And I paid for you. Good God Almighty. And since I bought you and paid for you, eat up. Gorge yourself. Have all you want. Just get all in on the holy things. Because I made a way for you to enjoy it. Glory. Glory. Let me
Let me just say this. Let me throw this out. We'll move to point two. I got so much more I can say here. I'm finna get bogged down. We won't get out of here till one o'clock. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Me and Brother Onassis fitting to go to church till 2 o'clock, praise God. Amen, Doc. He not only in this bind of holy things, you got to be bought in to enjoy holy things. You got to be born in. Look at the other way. I'm in both ways, by the way. I mean, Brother Mike Hyde, I'm in both ways. Watch the next part of verse 11. Leviticus 22, 11. But... If the priest bind his soul with his money, he shall eat of it. And, caveat again, for who can eat and partake in holy things? He that's born in his house. They shall eat of his meat. You got to get in the priest's family before you enjoy holy things. I cannot overstate this. I cannot overemphasize this. That the reason why many people don't want nothing to do with the holy things of God and His church is they've never been bought in or born in. No wonder. Can you not see Leviticus all over? Fingerprints of Leviticus all over the New Testament. Reckon why, Brother Xander, Jesus looked at a Pharisee of the Pharisees by night in John 3. He said, Let me tell you something, Nicodemus. You must be born again. See, your first birth didn't do nothing for you, Nicodemus, but get you into the family of the Jews. But I want to get you into the family of the high priest of heaven so you can participate and partake in heavenly things. So if you, Nicodemus, if you're going to get in on that, I'll tell you what you're going to have. Yeah, you might be a partaker because you're a Jew. You might even be in the Levites. And you might be a partaker of physical things. But you can't get none of that spiritual stuff, Nicodemus, until you be born of the spirit, he said. It's not a flesh birth. It's a spirit birth. Y'all, this morning, the night that I got born again down there in Pembroke, Georgia, at the Northside Baptist Church, this man knows where it is. I'm telling you, the night I got born again, I got birthed in. I got born in. You say, what happened? I developed new cravings. I developed a new appetite. I went home that night and I wanted to read my Bible. I went home that night. Something changed in my soul. Something changed in my life. You say, what happened? I got born in. (laughs) When I came into this world I just can't recall I don't remember anything about that birth at all mom and daddy told me about that birth September 30th 1984 oh but on my knees one night in prayer I just can't forget I've had a birth I can't remember and one I can't forget. (laughs) Y'all listen to me. It never made the morning papers and it never made the evening news when I took off that old man and I put on the new but my sins were cast into forgetfulness as far as the east is from the west. I've had a birth I can't remember and one I can't forget. That's what happened to me, man. I got born in the family. I got, I got to hurry here. I, point number one. Y'all just got to forgive me now. I've had to set up here since Thursday. And listen to all these blessed fire jokers get up and preach. I'm sitting over there like, like some sort of, like some sort of, Two-bit felt some sort of two-bit horse that wants to be a racehorse. I ain't, but I was watching all the racehorses run. And I'm sitting in the stalls going. Well now, now the broke down two-bit pony's getting his chance to run. Let me run for just a minute. I'm having myself a time. <laughs> I ain't 
ain't racehorses like none of them, but like they always said, Brother Peanut, two things make a preacher want to preach. Them that can't and them that can. And we heard about a half a dozen this week that can. You getting the one that can't this morning, but I'm doing my best, so hang with me. Hang with me. Doing my best. We see not only the buying in of holy things, but I want you to notice the blessings of holy things. Boy, Brother Roger, it's so good to get to be a part of holy things. I want you to notice what a blessing it is. Oh, my goodness. Look how many blessings there are because they're connected with holy things. Hold your place right here and go to Numbers just to the right. Numbers, the very next book, chapter 18. Numbers 18. Watch all the blessings associated with being in the family. Oh my goodness, you can't imagine how many blessings there are. Numbers chapter 18. We'll begin reading in verse number 8. Numbers 18, 8. And the Lord spake unto Aaron. This is what he said. Behold, I also have given thee the charge of mine heave offerings of all the hallowed things of the children of Israel. Unto thee have I given them by reason of the anointing. And to thy sons by an ordinance forever. This shall be thine of the most holy things. What kind of blessings do we get? What do we get out of this thing? Here you go. Every oblation of theirs, verse 9, every meat offering of theirs, and every sin offering of theirs, and every trespass offering of theirs, which they shall render unto me, shall be most holy for thee and for thy sons. In the most holy place shalt thou eat it. Every male shall eat it. It shall be holy unto thee. You say, what about me, preacher? I'm a daughter, not a son. Oh, hang on. Verse 11. And this is thine, the heave offering of their gift. With all the wave offerings of the children of Israel, I have given them unto thee and to thy sons and to thy daughters with thee by statute forever. Everyone that is clean in thy house shall eat of it. Can I pause right here and say this? I don't want to get ahead of myself because we're going there in just a minute. Did you see the last part of that? Not only do you got to be in the house, but you know the only people that really enjoy holy things? Clean people in the house. I don't care if you say, by the grace of God, washed in the blood and going to heaven. If you're living like a dog and you're not living for the Lord Jesus Christ, your mind's dirty and your heart's dirty and your mouth's dirty and everything's dirty about you, I promise you sitting here this morning, you ain't going to enjoy it just because you are saved. Verse 12. Watch it. Look at this. All, verse 12, all the best of the oil and all the best of the wine. This is what they get for being in the family. And of the wheat, the first fruits of them which they shall offer unto the Lord, them have I given thee. And whatsoever is first ripe in the land, which they shall bring unto the Lord, shall be thine. Everyone that is clean in thine house shall eat of it. Everything devoted in Israel shall be thine. You say, preacher, some of that's talking about stuff I don't understand. What's that heave offering it talks about? Well, you go over there and read about the heave offering. It's something where they'd offer that offering. They would heave it to the Lord and say, Lord, this is yours. And it talked about all this different meat, man. The, the Bible talks about in one place, it talks about the heave shoulder. You say, that food don't sound good. You ever had a shoulder roast? Praise God. Roast carrots, taters. It don't get no better. Brother Eddie, the Bible even says in one place that one of the heave offerings was fresh bread baked up that they would bring. They'd heave it to the Lord, and then it become the priest. Oh, son, Brother Mark, they sitting there eating roast, carrots and taters, bread, first ripe grapes. Woo, with all to dip it in. You say, what's that got to do with us? Brother Randall, my Bible says this in Ephesians 1, 3. We have been blessed with all spiritual blessings. Notice where it's at. In Jesus Christ. You say, preacher, this morning, that sounds like prosperity gospel. No, I'm not talking about God giving you the best of things physical. I'm talking about there ain't nothing. There ain't nothing no better than getting to take part. 
I mean really take part. Know your heart's clean. Know your life's clean. Know you're saved by the grace of God. And be able to sit in a worship service like this morning and really take part and enjoy the blessings of God in your soul. There ain't nothing like being able to sit down by a little lamp light by yourself late at night and open that blessed old book and the Holy Ghost start talking to you and the Word of God start comforting you. There ain't nothing like riding down the road by yourself at one, two o'clock in the morning and have a good gospel song crunk up and all of a sudden the Holy Ghost sat down in your car where you can't even hardly see riding down the road for ugly crying. That's spiritual blessings. That's blessings. That's stuff the world don't got this morning. And I imagined I imagined to myself, Brother Noah, I imagined that old rotten, heathen, thieving stranger. He's sitting there. The Bible said, Brother John, they get the best oil too. Anointing. He's sitting at that table, remembering what he used to be. An old heathen, thieving stranger. And he's sitting at that table, y'all, and all these blessings... He sits there and says, I don't deserve none of this. I don't deserve none of this. I'm getting to take part in something or not to have nary a part in. Somebody says, what you doing in there eating with the priest? I don't deserve it. It's all because of the priest. It's, all beca- it's not because I did anything. It's all because of him. I hesitated telling this. I'm going to do it anyway. It's too good to pass up. Here a few weeks ago, they run that longest race in NASCAR in Charlotte. The Coca-Cola 600. Thing lasts for like five hours. I've never been on a NASCAR race in my life, brother on that. But when we went up there with the teens to Delaware, we got to ride around the Delaware Speedway. How many of y'all teens was in here done that? Raise your hand if you was in here. Bunch of y'all. Some back there too. And we got to ride around the Speedway. And after we rode around that Speedway, I thought to myself, this is pretty doggone cool. I think I want to take you in a race. I sent it to the house. And uh, that Sunday, they run the race. It starts at 6 o'clock. Well, I'm like, that's out the question. But somebody said, well, preacher, you know that thing runs till like 11 o'clock. We can have church like we normally do, and we did. Then get out at 7, 30, 8 o'clock, said, so we can still go down there and take in like the last couple of hours. I said, let's do it. It's noon. I'm sitting at the meal at the house, and I said, uh, I know a guy. Oh, brother Heath Cherry joined this church here a while back here, Miss Jody and St- Slade and Stone. They, his daddy is, works for Joe Gibbs Racing. I texted him. I said, uh, hey, Doc, what would be the chances of possibly just maybe? Y'all got any extra tickets laying around? Maybe a couple of us could go. It wasn't like 10 minutes later. He said, check your inbox. I checked my inbox. Tickets, my name on it. Cody's on. Said, they ready. Said, hey, praise God. <laughs> Brother Timmy, we got to rolling down there after church. It's about 830 now. We got to rolling down there after church. He texted me. He said, let me know where you parked at. I come get you with the golf cart. Yeah. Say what? <laughs> Pulled in that little parking spot up comes the Joe Gibbs golf cart. Throw me and my boy and man, we done took off down to the stadium. Dropped us off at the front door. Bro Jack, you sir. Got out, bro Jack started running up there like a kid in the candy store. We couldn't even stop him. It's so loud, he done lost it either. <laughs> Jack, stop, you don't even know where we're going, bro. It was exhilarating. (laughs) We got up in there and y'all know what happened. Thing got rained out. We was 40 laps in. And the bottom dropped out, Brother Hunter. Thought, well, that's all she wrote of that. You know, they're going to dry the track off. Who knows if that's going to work or not. So we're standing underneath the grandstands eating pizza. Brother Jack had some stranger walk up to him and give him chicken nuggets. (laughs) The bad part is he ate them. I said, Doc, you can't be eating stuff from strangers anyway. 
And all of a sudden, we're sitting there, and I, I get a phone call from Brother Heath. And he says, hey, meet me out front. I don't know how long this is going to last. There ain't no sense in y'all just standing around. You come get on the golf cart. I'll take you to the infield. You can sit in the team bus. Drink Coca-Cola with us and watch TV. I said, say what? <laughs> we walked back out. There he was again. We hopped on that thing, rode under the track, popped out in the infield, in where only the team members go. Big old Prevost buses and all that. And there's a Joe Gibbs bus. We walked up there, walked in, and old, old Slade got to shake President Trump's hand that day. I just wanted to touch him. <laughs> touch the hand that touched the Trump. Praise God. <laughs> old Stone and Slade come out. We hanging out. And all of a sudden, they called the race. And mind you, the race winner was on their team. And I'm with them. Everybody come piling out that bus on the race team. They said, they called it. Let's go to victory lane, boys. I thought, well, not us. We, we got no part in that. Brother Heath looked and said, come on. We're going to victory lane. I said. <laughs> we start walking through the pits. Got over to victory. Victory lane, mind you, is an exclusive place. They got gates around it. Only people associated with the team get in or a corporate executive sponsors. Brother, they opened that gate. I walked right behind Heath Cherry and walked up in there like I own that blessed fire play. <laughs> I know nothing about NASCAR. Literally, I was talking to a guy who sat next to me in the race. His name was Cody, too. Happened to be a good Christian boy. And I was talking to him, and I was asking him questions. Now, what's going on here? Why are they doing this? Why? I know nothing. I know nobody. I know nothing. Nothing. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I, I get a spot. Like, here's the big victory place, and down here's where they're all going to be. And I found me a spot on the very corner by the banner, and I'm standing up here like this, and the ground floor is down there, and we're inside this gate. They done shut it. And all of a sudden, they open it, and they roll the victory car in. Chris Bell walks in with the winner. Joe Gibbs is standing from me to you on his phone, taking pictures and signing autographs. Coca-Cola executives is passing out hats. And I'm standing here like this, and all of a sudden, while I'm standing here, Brother Tim, mind you, the infield's where all the drunk rednecks hang out, too. And them's my wife's people. <laughs> Swear to goodness, I thought one of them was named King. I promise you, it looked just like her people. <laughs> and I'm standing there. And all of a sudden, Brother Cody, behind me, I hear somebody hollering, cussing. Now, mind you, the gate behind us where I'm standing ain't from like here to the choir bench. And that big gate's back there, but you can see through it, and there's people standing behind it watching. And behind out here is this drunk redneck, shirtless, pair of orange fluorescent shorts, Crocs, hair down past his shoulders, and a beer in his hand. And he's saying, you blankety blank blank. You don't deserve to be there. Now, he was talking about because the race got canceled and we really didn't deserve to win. But he's talking to me. <laughs> you, na, 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 na. you don't deserve to be there. And I literally turned around, looked at him, and I said, I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> And brother, I'm standing there with the CEOs and the executives and the winning race car and the champion. And I'm sitting there and they're cussing me saying, you don't deserve to be there. And I'm like, I know, I know. And the Holy Ghost said, you know what else you don't deserve? Yes, sir. I said, Lord, I sure do. I know what else I don't deserve. But one of these days I'm going to stand in glory and I'm going to be there in victory lane. You know why I'm going to be there? Not cause I
somebody come by your way and say, you don't deserve to be here. Just say, I know. You don't deserve to be here. I know. You don't deserve to be here. You don't deserve to be here. <laughs> you don't deserve to be here. I'm telling you, I know. I don't deserve to be preaching. I don't deserve to be living for God. I don't deserve to be enjoying the presence of God. But here I am because I got hooked up with Jesus this morning. Amen. I'm done. I'm done. It's 1233. I'm through. Blessings of the holy things. Buying in of the holy things. I got to tell you this or I wouldn't be a good pastor if I didn't. I want to show you there's a ban and a block on holy things. Lastly, there's a ban on holy things. Go back to Leviticus 22. I want you all to understand something with me this morning. Everybody don't get to partake, Brother Bill Ellis. Oh, God loves everybody. I didn't say he didn't. I didn't say he didn't prove his love at Calvary. He did. Oh, everybody's God's youngin. Where'd you hear that pile of garbage at? My Bible said in the book of Ephesians, we are all the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. Watch what your text said, verse 10 of Leviticus 22, verse 10. There shall no stranger eat of the holy thing. Stranger don't get in less than he's bought. You know, I'm sure there wouldn't be a stranger, Brother Jack, I'm sure there wouldn't be a stranger that would say something like this, one of those strangers in that day, Brother Hunter. I'm sure there wouldn't be one that would say, I don't believe in holy things. I don't believe there's such a thing as holy things. No. Brother Wilt, they know there's holy things. They could see them. But it didn't make a difference in their life till they partook in them. I want you to know something this morning. You can believe in God till you're blue in the face. You can believe there's a Savior that died on the cross. Hey, I, I, I have a mental ascent. Jesus died on the cross. But I'm telling you, it ain't doing you no good, and you ain't partaking in there a holy thing until you get in the family. There's a block and a ban this morning that you don't have any part. It's like what Pete, don't tell me the New Testament ain't been reading Leviticus. Peter said this in Acts chapter 8. He looked at that sorcerer named Simon, and Simon thought he could buy his way in, Brother Rodney, with money. And Peter said, you have no part in this matter. You get nothing for trying to get in by buying your way in. I want you to notice there's not just the block in the ban of the stranger. I want you to notice the block in the ban of this man's even his children. Watch this. Watch this. Skip down to verse 12. Leviticus 22, 12. Watch this. If the priest's daughter also be married unto a stranger, a heathen. Not one of the people of Israel, not God's people. She married to a heathen. Do you know what that means? She's living a heathen lifestyle. Listen to me. Please don't miss this. I'm fitting to be done. But y'all listen to me. Just because she got yoked up with the heathen didn't change the fact she was the priest's daughter. Brother Chris, nothing will ever change that. She belongs to the priest. She's born in his family. But watch what happens because she's done now run off with the heathen. Verse 12 she may not eat of an offering of the holy things. You say, what happened in this story? I'll tell you what happened in this story. This girl had been born in the house. Brother Kevin Steele, she'd been around holy things all her life. And she started taking it for granted, Brother Jacob. She started taking for granted how good the food at the priest's table was. How great and wonderful the holy things are. And she got to looking out there at the heathen and thought, well, that looks fun. Man, that looks like a blast. I'm going to go try and enjoy some of that. Okay. 
but you're going to miss out on them holy things. I want you to hear something this morning. We have done a great disservice to people at the church of Jesus Christ all across this country and all over the world. And the disservice we've done is we've tried to make saved people feel comfortable in their sin. So we've dumbed the standards of the church down. We've done, we've done, hey, we've done the standard down of people on the platform, people in leadership, people in Sunday school, people in membership. And you can live out how you want to out there and then enjoy holy things. That's not Bible. I've watched a lot of people run out there and live a wicked, ungodly lifestyle, save people, yes. Go into heaven, yes. But they done been dabbling out there so long they come back in and you can watch. The holy things have passed them by. They, ain't, they miss it. I'm telling you this morning, if you live in a wicked, ungodly lifestyle as a Christian, you can't take part in the holy things. Brother Cliff Jackson just said it in the men's prayer room this morning. At, at a wedding, no less, the other day. And they start handing out communion to everybody at the wedding. Who knows who all these people are? They might be fornicators there, shacking up. There might be homosexuals there. God cussers there, lost people, blasphemers, drunkards, idolaters, railers, revilers. My Bible said we ain't supposed to administer the table of the Lord to people even if they are saved that's living in that kind of wicked, ungodly mess. That's what your Bible said. We're living in a day we've taken holy things and we're Oprah with holy things. Oh, you get a holy thing, and you get a holy thing. You, not, not if you're running around with the strangers of this world. Oh, no, not if you're running around with the heathen, living a heathenistic lifestyle. It don't work that way. Amen. Amen or oh me. I don't really matter. But I want you to notice this. I want you to notice this. Bless my heart, and we're done. Watch the restoration in verse 13. Watch this. This preached daughter, she run off and she's been cut off from the holy things. She's missing out on them. Verse 13. But if the preached daughter be a widow or divorced and have no child, watch it, watch it, and is returned. <laughs> Thank God for restoration. Thank God for reconciliation. Since she's returned unto her father's house as in her youth, she shall eat of her father's meat. She gets back in on the holy things. <laughs> you say, what happened? She got out there, Brother Jeremiah, running around eating at the table of the heathen. You know what she found out eating at the table of the heathen? I'm a priest's daughter. It don't satisfy. I'm a priest's daughter. I've tasted of the good things. I've been made partakers of the holy things. I can't go back to that. I can't enjoy that. She said, I, I can imagine the first time, Brother John Glenn. Hey, it says she's hooked up with a stranger, Brother Cody. I imagine the first time, Brother Kyler, she sits down at a table with these bunch of strangers. And they set strong liquor down in front of her. She never drunk nothing like that. And then all of a sudden... Brother Jenkins, they bring out pork and they throw that old dirty pig down in front of her. Mind you, that's unholy stuff in the Old Testament. Right. Now, I know it's been sanctified and cleansed in the New Testament, but you got to hear what I'm saying this morning. And all of a sudden, they throw that pork down in front of her and that strong drink, and she's sitting there and she says, I ain't supposed to eat this. This is some unholy stuff. We ain't never ate that back down yonder at the house of God with the priest. And that first time she picked up that piece of pork and stuck it in her mouth, her conscience is defiled. Her heart and her mind's defiled. Some of y'all this morning, you done been messing around with the pork and the junk in this world, and it's defiling you, Christian. No wonder you can't enjoy my preaching this morning. You so gorged on the trash and the unclean stuff of this world, you can't enjoy preaching no more. You can't enjoy meetings like we just had no more. You can't enjoy good choir singing no more. You do bless fire full of junk. 
And all of a sudden she recognizes, I miss them holy things. I remember being a little girl and sitting around that table and daddy would read scripture and pray over our food and we'd have a good time eating the holy things. She'd say, you know what? Said if she was divorced, she says, cat daddy, see ya. Wouldn't want to be you. I'm bouncing. Where are you going? I'm going back to the holy stuff. Something inside of me won't let me enjoy this junk no more. I got to go back where I know there's holy stuff being divvied out at. And when she comes back, you know what she finds when she comes back? With a repentant, contrite heart. She comes back with a repentant, contrite heart, Brother Hunter. She finds a daddy that says, come on back in, honey. Come back and enjoy the holy things. Come on back in. Let's enjoy eating together. Let's enjoy fellowship. Can I say this morning, if you're a child of God and you've been running around out there with the heathen, there's a place you can come back to. There's a spot you can get cleaned up at and you can go back to enjoying the holy things of God that you used to enjoy. If you're tired of trash, help me Esther, if you're tired of this world, come home to the holy things. I'm telling you, we're living in a day. She's coming up here to play. I'm done. We're living in a day, Brother Skip. Churches are given out the unclean, unholy things. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know what I'm talking about, Brother John. And Brother Steve, they're giving out and they're making people feel comfortable living in their backslid, immoral, ungodly lifestyle as a Christian. But it's church. Oh no, ain't nothing holy about it. It's a rock and roll concert. It's a nightclub. It's a coffee bar barista. Ain't nothing holy about it. Ain't you tired of eating after the husk of the swine? Run home like the prodigal to the father's house. He'll let you get back in on holy things. And maybe, just maybe this morning, as a child of God, you would remember and be reminded, I don't deserve to be here. I know. I know. Here I am. Some way, somehow, bought with a price, born into the family. I don't ever plan on leaving it. There's too much good holy stuff. I've tasted and seen the Lord's good. You young people need to make your mind up never to leave the Father's house. Too much good holy stuff. Don't defile your conscience with the meat of the heathen. Thank God I've got a part in holy things. Do you? Maybe this morning something's in your heart that's keeping you from enjoying holy things. Won't you come this morning? Maybe you just want to come say, thank you, Lord. I know what the holy things are about. Let's all stand this morning. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Father, I pray you'd bless this simple little message from the Word of God. Maybe there's some sinner in here. They've never taken part in holy things. They're lost. Never trusted Jesus Christ as Savior. Never met the holy thing of heaven, the Lord Jesus. So they have no part in any of this. God, this morning may they come by faith, trusting Christ alone and faith alone. And believe the gospel. That our Savior died for our sins according to the scriptures. Was buried and rose again the third day for our justification. Move now I pray in Jesus name. Help our hearts. Amen.